Welcome to Retro Bassin. Today we are on a pretty new lake for us, uh, one that I've been to once or twice, have not done too, too well, but um, me and a Bluetooth Johnson back there had the morning to get out on the lake and I think he's got eight or nine conference calls today. So aside from that, uh, we're gonna be doing some bassin. I heard on Instagram this week that there were some bigger class fish here caught on both frogs and worms and jigs. So we're gonna be out here for a few. Um, he's gonna be on the phone because that's what he does. Retro bassin, kicking some assin, wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's one. <laughs> there he goes. There we go. Whoo, big worm. Come on, buddy. Oh, snap. Dude, that's a nice fish. Oh, man. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Oh, son, look at that tank. Look at that guy. So we got a nice solid fish <laughs> on, look at that crazy worm. <laughs> that is awesome. So that was pretty cool. We heard this lake had some nicer fish in it. Um, and we heard you just had to find the grass. We did, we were fishing some top water this morning. Not a ton of luck. So switched to a vintage worm and nice solid fish. Awesome. All right, we're gonna talk real quick about the tackle we caught that fish with. So I've got a new old combo that we're fishing with. This is a Shimano Bantam SG Reel paired up with a Shimano Medium Action Karate Stick. This is pretty nice. A lot of those old school rods that I have are pretty noodly. They kind of whip around a lot. This thing's got some backbone and I've got a feeling this is gonna be one of my more preferred vintage worm rods out there. Speaking of the worm itself, we caught it on this guy. I, uh, in the heat of the moment, forgot what it was called. <laughs> um, I just forgot again. So this is an eight inch Butch Harris worm. Picked this thing up from eBay. It comes, I think, like in a four pack. It is a basic straight tail worm with a really flat bottom and sort of this really kind of weird swirl design in a very old timey looking green. Exactly. I've got my shot now. <laughs> what kind of fishing show is this? Woo! Wait, what the hell? Dude, that's a giant. Wait. Oh, that's it. Here. <laughs> Here. Catfish. Oh, oh, oh. oh big old cat. <laughs> I was like, it's not fighting like a bass. Oh, man. <laughs> so apparently the only thing the Guggen baits are good for <laughs> this giant catfish. <laughs> that is actually a really nice channel cat, man. That's like a, I don't know, eight pounder. You could weigh it. You probably should weigh it, honestly. <laughs> yeah. How much is he? An eight and a half pounder. <laughs> <laughs> so in the comment section down below, let me know, does that count or is that like a minus one if you catch a catfish on a Guggen bait? <laughs> oh, that thing is, <laughs> that's a monster.
All right, we are back in the studio after a couple hours on the water with my good buddy Brandon. It's been a long time since we shared the boat together and it was good to get back out there. I also like that Brandon is embracing the whole retro bass and way of life with his new rayon jacket. I had not fished um, that lake in about a year and the last time I fished it, uh, I did not do so well. So I think I'm starting to figure out a little bit how to fish uh, this particular body of water. There's a bunch of weeds there, but they tend to be more scattered than um, some of the other lakes we fish and the water is definitely more stained. When I get back out there, I think the key is gonna be to locate grass in that five to seven foot of water and pitch some variety of soft plastic or maybe even a crankbait around those various clumps of weeds. So back on the vintage worm journey, let's talk about the bait that we were fishing with today. It is such an old bait, honestly such an obscure bait that I could find very little information on it. So here's a package though, I do have a couple new in the package and this is it, the Butch Harris worm. It is the eight and a half inch professional bass worm. This thing comes with one, two, so there's actually only three worms in this pack. Um, and everything that I can see all, of all the ones I've picked up, they're always in this translucent color. That means one of two things. Either A, this was such a good color back in the day that they didn't even bother to make any other colors, or this was such a bad color that every other color got used except for the old clear green. I personally love this color of bait. What I like about it, it is the best of both worlds. It certainly stands out, but at the same time, that green is a color that the fish are used to seeing in their natural environment. So here is the bait itself. It is eight and a half inches long with a standard flat tail. It's got a flat bottom, which you can appreciate and a rounded top. I did not have a problem inserting the hook or burying the hook into this egg sack about halfway down, but you notice it's got these weird little ridges on it. It goes from the head down to the egg sack, you see the spiral, and then from the egg sack down to the tail. I don't know if it had anything to do with it, but this worm definitely spun on me just a little bit. I was trying to figure out how best to rig it either through the bottom on the flat side, which I did. Uh, toward the end of the day, I ended up rigging it sideways. I don't know what was the best option. What I do like about it though, especially living in Texas, it's a big old bait. And that fish I got, I actually thought he was a little bit closer to four before we weighed him. But this is gonna get you a bigger bite than I think that little finesse worm that we normally see. I spent some time on the internet trying to find more information about this guy, Mr. Butch Harris. I assume he invented the worm and certainly he was well known enough at the time to have his mug on the package. I could not find a ton of information other than the fact that he is in the Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame and he also has some ties to, get this, professional wrestling. Oddly enough, the only thing I could find on the internet today having anything to do with Butch Harris was an article in the 1977 edition of Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. Looks at uh, a time when R.K. Butch Harris went fishing with a good buddy of his and professional wrestler, Wahoo McDaniel. It says that R.K. Butch Harris was a Hall of Fame bass fisherman and he ran a company called Butch Harris Lures, which was a subsidiary of Ringley and Crockett Incorporated, which was under the umbrella of Crockett Promotions in North Carolina. Of course, any old school wrestling fan knows that Jim Crockett Promotions and Southern Wrestling ruled the day back in the 70s. And so not only did they specialize in pile drivers, but also bass lures. According to the article, a Ringling Crockett promoted a number of non-wrestling activities, including concerts, the Harlem Globetrotters, fishing tournaments, and other ventures. I guess bass fishing lures was just one of the many things that Crockett was into back in the day. And the article's also got a picture of what looks like, again, that clear green Butch Harris worm. In my research, there's one of the bait that Butch Harris put his name on, and it was this little crankbait called the Fastback. It says, Butch Harris introduces the new plug on the block. 
We're starting uh, at the bottom and planning to stay there because that is where big bass stay. So, for the deepest bass fishing thrill of your life, the Fast Pack, with an average cast and medium retrieve, the Fast Pack runs from 12 to 15 feet of water. Ask us by name, and we're new. The Fast Pack by Butch Harris Lures. These baits are pretty hard to find. I've been trying to get my hands on a Fast Pack crankbait for a little while, but I just don't want to spend like 20 bucks on one. Oh, and time for a shameless plug. If you're all interested in owning a shirt like this, go to Texas Provisions, that is TXProvisions.com. Uh, this is one of the signature shirts. You can get it there in a number of different sizes. This body of water, by the way, is Lake Austin. This is the bridge that goes right over Lake Austin, and we've got some big plans for this little body of water coming up real soon. Again, check them out at txprovisions.com. Hopefully you enjoyed this little mini chapter in our vintage worm journey. We have got a few more baits. I cannot wait to get back on uh, that particular lake. I think it's got a ton of potential. I think that there's definitely some bigger fish to be had. And boy, we got a lot of worms to throw. Until next time, keep those worms a-wiggling. And definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass.